Okay, let's go. Oh, shucks. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a very special episode of Woo, woo, woo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Riffin with Griffin. Riffin with Griffin. Riffin with Griffin. Yeah. Woo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Riffin with Griffin, baby. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the 50th episode. 50 episodes, and I'm here with the singing man. Um, I can't believe it. I've done 50 episodes, and I want to thank everybody for watching and listening and subscribing and doing all that stuff. You know what I mean? And this is a special episode for y'all. I want to thank you. Whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is Riffin' with Griffin. I know everybody love the woo-woos. <laughs> Here I am. I'm doing a solo episode. Episode number 50, 50, 50, 50 episode, y'all. And um, I just want to thank everybody. But uh, even before I start, uh, let's see. Let me look at the calendar and let's see where we're going to be as of this uh, particular episode of the podcast. Um, all right. So when that comes out, all right, I'm going to be, where am I going to be? Where am I going to be? Um, Brad Garrett. I'm going to be in Vegas. So if you're in Vegas, everybody, I'm going to be at the MGM Grand at Brad Garrett's Comedy Club. That's going to be from October 7th to the 14th. So no, 7th to the 12th, I think it is, or the 6th to the 12th. Whatever. It's on the website. It's on my website. And then a week after that, you know, I'll be in uh, L.A. area at the Rec Room at Huntington Beach. Um and I'll be at the La Jolla Comedy Store coming to San Diego the 18th, 19th, and 20th. So that's good. And then I'm actually going to do some dates with Dane Cook. You know, can you remember when he was on my podcast? He was like, I'm going to have you on the tour. So I got a couple dates with Dane the 24th and 25th. I'm not sure where those are, but everything will be on the website. Anyways, this is Griffin with Griffin, 50 episodes. If y'all been with me from the beginning, and you know, I used to do a lot of solo episodes in my, my, my living room. I didn't have, even have a setup, you know what I mean? But not that my setup is all that great, but you know, it is what it is. And so, <coughs> excuse me, here we are doing Griffin with Griffin. But anyways, I want to just start by, I got some, uh, I got some, some weird new music. <laughs> well, I got some weird music from somebody. Wait, I want to get his name right. This is great. Um. What's this guy? Steve Solomon. Steve Solomon sent me a couple of tracks. They're not even really tracks. They're just like little jingles, but I think it's kind of cool. So I just wanted to play them for you guys right now. Um, here's one. Where do you turn when you want to laugh? The Riffin with Griffin oh. podcast. <laughs> we got to get that shit again. Where do you turn when you want to laugh? The Riffin with Griffin oh. podcast. Hey, guys. <laughs> it's not like it was a kid's show. No, we, we covered that. And then he sent this other one, too. This one's kind of cool. Oh, oh. I be Riffin with Griffin on his podcast show. Boom, 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 boom. I be Riffin with Griffin, and you have got to know. There's interviews and lots of laughs and even fun and games. I be Riffin with Griffin. I hope you do the same. <laughs> Steve Solomon, thanks, bro. That's, uh, you know, first new music I've gotten in a while. I also got some stuff in uh, the P.O. Box, uh, episode 50, I want to talk about. I don't have the shirt because my girlfriend stole it, my ex-girlfriend. Well, she probably might be my girlfriend by now again. But anyways... It says, hey, Eric, I'm a huge fan. I love the podcast and Griffin Gaming. You're one of the most upbeat, happy people I know, so I decided to ship you some merch. It's from my tiny, super local company. I print the shirts mainly for, for my friends and family, hoping to spread some positivity and call it. It's Stay Happy Apparel. That's the name of it. Stay Happy Apparel by Andy. Andy, I don't have the shirt. Somebody took it from me, but uh, I, I know it's my ex. But anyway... You know what? I, thank you for the message and the notes, and uh, thank you for sending me uh, the shirt. It's actually a great shirt. It's called Stay Happy Apparel. It's got a little company, so maybe that's going to blow up. Once again, too, I got to light my candles from the Hangover Candle Company. Hangover Candle, the guy always hits me up on Instagram. 
It's just, I still I don't even need new candles yet, bro, because these haven't burned out yet. But uh, I do thank you for the candles, and these are dope. You know, the candles, it smells good. It keeps a nice ambiance. Now, here's a little special card I got, guys. It says, not everyone can do what you do. Right? And it says, please start an Eric Griffin album fund. The people need your album. This one person wants me to sing. And check this out. Sent me $100 to start my album fund. I mean, I don't even know what to say. And it was a really nice personal note. From Val, I don't want to really want to read it, you know, but it's just a lot of really nice mess message in this uh, letter. It's a personal letter, and I just, I just really appreciate this kind of love right here. So maybe I will work on a Riffin' with Griffin Christmas album. So if y'all got some Christmas tracks out there, let's put out a Riffin' with Griffin Christmas album. You know what I mean? Let's do that. But uh, Val, thank you very, 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 very much for that. Okay, and I also got, I was on Rick Glassman's podcast, uh, Take Your Shoes Off, and he brought out some, like, some booty wipes, right? He brings out some booty wipes because we're having fun and making jokes about it. It's really hilarious. Rick Glassman's uh, podcast is really funny. Take Your Shoes Off. He's an interesting cat, so his podcast is growing, so make sure you uh, tune into that one. But then next thing you know, I go to my peel box, and I got a big-ass box from a place called Booty Wipes Headquarters. Booty Wipes headquarters, y'all. So they sent me. Yeah. Well, anyway, look at that. Booty Wipes. <laughs> I got a little pin. I don't know where you would ever wear that. But you know what? Let's put that there. Let's put that there for Booty Wipes. And then it's just a big ass box. Big ass box like this of like. I think it's like portable little one. Oh, yeah. Little one stop. Little one-stop booty wipes. I'm talking about you guys don't even see how big this box is. <laughs> it's just like a it's like a big ass box. So I got a lifetime supply of keeping my booty nice and clean. So my booty gonna be clean for a long time, y'all. Hello? Oh shit. Hello? Okay. So, anyways. Anyways, my booty's going to be clean for a long time, y'all. Thank you to Booty Wipes for sending me a huge box of Booty Wipes. I don't, you know, it's individual packages, though. I wish it was like, you know, so you could take one. Now I got to have all this, like, maybe there's other stuff in the box. You know, well, let me look and see. <laughs> no, it looks like it's all the same. Yeah, it's just a big box of Booty Wipes, so. You know what? I might send a box out with, uh, you know, you send me some. Everybody just sends me a, a good ass jingle for uh, my, a, if you make Christmas music for me, I'm gonna send you a box of booty wipes, one little box of booty wipes. So, anyways, thanks to booty wipes. Um, but anyways, here we are, guys. Uh, episode 50 solo episode. A lot of stuff going on in the world that I wanted to yip yap about. I got some questions. I got some questions from the fans that I'll go over before the episode ends. I got some great stuff from uh, on Instagram, Instagram and Twitter uh, from people. So I'll try to answer all those questions and just talk about what's going on with me. You know, this that you know this last uh, fifty episodes. It's just you know it's been really great. I've had some great people on: Dane Cook, Tiffany Haddish, Tone Bell. I mean, the list goes on and on. Tony Rock, uh, Rick Glassman, Adam Ray. Jeremiah Watkins. I've had so many great people. A lot of my really good friends have come on, and I still got some more people to go. I'm going to get Chris D'Elia on, Theo, all these guys. But, you know, they're just so busy doing their own thing, shooting movies and stuff like that. But, you know, it's really exciting times to be doing a podcast. You know, I know you. It, sometimes it feels like it's oversaturated, but it's not because, you know, the YouTube is huge. Uh, the the listening market is, is huge. There's, there's so many... There's so much time in the day that when people want to listen to podcasts, you can, you know, you, you're at work. So I appreciate you truck drivers. I appreciate you people at the office right now listening and just, you know, trying to help the day go by. And I appreciate you helping me. I'm using me to help you get your day by. And just the people that just randomly like to listen to podcasts or people that are just fans. I mean, it's really great and I enjoy doing it and I'm going to keep doing it until like, you know, I can't do it anymore. or Maybe I'm just too busy because I was filming a movie in Boston um, film, um, I was in this Netflix movie. They already announced it, so I could talk about it. It's called The Sleepover on Netflix. Uh, it's this kind of action, comedy, family movie. 
It was great, but I was only on set for like four or five days, and I was in Boston for like a month, so that shit was crazy. But I had some crazy on the set. There was this dog in in the uh, in the movie, right? So in the movie, I play like a a witsec agent. I play like a witness protection program agent for like the so the premise of the movie is the mom is in witness protection, her kids and family don't know, and then you know she gets found out, and then so I go. So there's this scene where I go to the house just because I think something's wrong, and then the kids. They think I'm a bad guy and they attack me, right? And then they tie me up. So now in the movie, I'm tied up and then there's later their dog is in front of me. And this dog, man, is supposed to like sit there and growl at me. Man, they couldn't get this fucking dog to do anything that they wanted it to do. And so I'm starting to be like, I'm getting uncomfortable because I'm tied up. You know what I mean? They got me tied up in Christmas lights and all this stuff. And in the mo- it, it, not just for the movie, but in real life, I have to be tied up so it looks good. So I'm uncomfortable. This dog ain't doing what it's supposed to do. And I'm talking about, like, it's supposed to be a trained dog. And I know it's an animal. It's an animal. But I feel like a coyote with rabies that we found on the side of the street would have done just as good as this dog, this trained dog, supposedly trained dog. So it it was crazy. I even asked the producer about it. And I was like, yo, man, what's up with this dog? And he was like, I know, you know, (laughs) because this is what happens. So when you film outside of California, let's say you film like in a place like Boston, uh, you have to hire local hires. That's why you get a tax break to film, you know, your stuff in another state, like a place like Boston. So we're filming in Boston and then Boston's going to be like, all right, Massachusetts is going to give the, the production a tax break, but you have to hire local people. So I don't know if, you know. Like more power. I mean, I don't want to like trash the lady completely, but like this particular dog that they chose just was not doing what it was supposed to do. And it just was like a, a nightmare. Like just, and it was two dogs it's supposed to be one dog. You know, it's like the two dogs are being one dog, you know, in the movie, but these two dogs didn't look alike at all. One of them was considerably bigger than the other one. Totally different personalities. I just don't know how it's going to come across. So there's a little insight for that movie when you watch it. And I asked the producer, I'm like, yo, bro, what's going on with this dog? And he's like, oh, yeah. And I was like, I was like, he was like, well, that was the best trainer in Boston. That was the dog, the, the number one dog. And I was like, well, what was he was like, number two had Lyme disease. <laughs> That's how bad the situation is. So if you're out in Boston and you're a dog trainer, get into the movie business. I'm talking about anybody in Boston. If you're in Boston and you do makeup, hair, you should look into getting into the movie business because a lot of productions are moving there. They're doing a lot of TV shows there. And according to like hair and makeup people, there are not enough hair and makeup artists in the Boston area to cover all the productions. So, you know, it's something if you want to get into that industry, you should uh, really uh, look into that. So, but look out for that movie coming out, The Sleepover. It was weird. I spent all my per diem money. Look, I mean, this is like first world problems, but they had me in a really fancy hotel. And my I, my hotel bill was so high. I mean, I, I gave all the per diem money and I still had to pay like eight hundred dollars. It was crazy. Um, but and I had a good time. Um, but the, the, movie, the movie should be fun. So make sure you look for that on Netflix coming out probably next year or something like that. Who knows? Maybe people won't even remember this podcast episode by then. All right. One of the other things I wanted to talk about is like I'm a huge Big Brother fan. And so they just had this season 21 of Big Brother. And the other night they had the season finale. And the season finale was ruined because there was allegations of racism against the guy that won. But like right before he's about to win, they come up with these allegations. And listen, the guy is not – he was kind of a dickhead throughout the season. Mickey, whatever his name is, Jackson, you know, he was kind of a dickhead. But to me, it was just part of Big Brother. To me, it was all game. So, like, in the first few episodes of the season – okay, if anybody – if you don't know Big Brother, okay, Big Brother is a is a social experiment. People live in a house. It's taped 24 hours a day. And the whole point of it is there's competitions that, uh, that, that people compete against each other and they scheme and connive against each other to vote each other out until there's one person left and that one person gets $500,000. I just want you to understand the motivation behind Big Brother is to win $500,000 thousand dollars this ain't a motherfucking popularity contest this ain't some sort of like oh let's see who's the best character no this is people lying scheming uh being people that they're not not you know just being the actually the most awful version of themselves oftentimes than not to win five hundred thousand dollars okay let's just put that out there all right so they had this thing called 
uh, BB camp out. Okay. They had a camp director. All right. So like they had to, the, it was like the, all these people just got into the house and then they all had to nominate a camp director. And then that camp director gets to pick four people that are going to get kicked out of the house basically. Right. So he raises his hand and these four other people raise their hand. One of them's Cliff, who was the oldest guy on the cast, like really old for Big Brother, in my opinion, but we'll get to that. Then it was like a black dude, and there's always a, not a lot of black people on Big Brother. It's a black dude, uh, this fat Latino girl. She's fat, okay? I'm just going to, you know, she's a big girl, Jessica, big girl, her. And um, it just happened to be like, it happened to be like, the, some of the minorities in the group raised their hand too to be nominated for this position. The white guy won. So when he, he's saying it to the camera, his logic is, okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put up the people who also raised their hand because they seem like a threat. If they're willing to be this, then he, you know they're, they're not necessarily going to be allies for him. So they're strong people. Let me get them out. Cut, cut to 99 days later, and there and then people are claiming that that was a he did it solely based off race and age, and I just the guy was a dickhead, but I got no sense of racism from him watching the season. Now I didn't watch the feeds because you can watch the 24 hour feed if you're a real junkie. You can watch the 24 hour feeds, and I didn't fucking watch the 24 hour feeds because that's like too much, you know. And they even have a show called B Big Brother After Dark, so you could be watching that. And but I love the show. I, I think it's a horrible train wreck social experiment that accentuates the worst attributes of people's personalities for money for them to win. 500,000 and for us to look at home and be like wow these people are awful here's what's wrong with big brother right now okay first of all they, they, they this this push towards diversity let's make it diverse and so for them diversity doesn't just mean race they want to do diverse in age and size big brother is a f like more than half of the competitions are physical competitions, like endurance competitions and running around and jumping on shit. And if you, they had this old guy who, to his credit, he lasted all the way to the final four. But I watched the whole season, and to me, Cliff got more lucky than anything else. They were just bigger targets. And they had this fat girl who every single physical competition, she failed. OK, she failed and they even made the show itself made fun of her. She was like this, like, hold on to some shit competition. She had to hold on and they they, they cut to her and she's like, I just want to prove to every you hear the voiceover. I just want to prove to everybody that girls my size. And then she falls. They did that on the fucking show. OK, now here's what I don't have any. I'm not fat shaming. I'm not a this ain't about age. This is about this particular show. If you're going to have a fat girl on the show then you need to alter the competitions where she has a chance to win every single one. That's just my opinion. I think that whoever the weakest link on the show is physically, like if you like have somebody with a wheelchair in a wheelchair on Big Brother, but then you make sure all the competitions are strictly mental or they're like you have to use your upper body. So it seems like this person has a chance. If not, you are setting them up for failure. And that's exactly what happened. And at the same time, you're also positioning them to be victims. And that shit pisses me off. Let me tell you who should be on Big Brother. It should be all pretty people. Like, just get hot, just super hot people with in-shape physiques, and then let them battle it out. And we at home watch... These pretty people be awful, okay? Because that's what the fucking show is. It's people being awful, all right? They lie to each other. They scheme. They make promises that they break. They break their word. It's just, like you know, they make these alliances and then they break them. They get into these romances that, you know, then, then, then the, the, the people fight against each other. When you combine pretty in shape people, a type personality, model looking women and these you know, you know straight big big tough straight guys and even like the gay dudes who go in there who are like super athletic. If you're going to have these people in there and then you're going to combine them with like unathletic, you know, fat, uh out of shape people and not even, and I'm not even talking about even with personality. If you're going to bring these people who are like 
Like they've been bullied outside. You know, they, they're not the prettiest person. You're setting those people up to be victims. And I just think that it, it's ridiculous. Okay. You watch TV to escape. Big Brother, it's like when you watch Love Island. When you're watching Love Island or some dating show and it's like all about pretty people having sex, that's why we're watching. I don't need that shit diversified with people who look like me, okay? You don't motherfuckers don't want to see me on Love Island with some pretty chick in a you know in a bikini, not on TV. You don't want to see that cuz you can be like, "What is that dude doing?" You know, it just sets it up for bad vibes. And that's what Big Brother is doing. And their attempt to appease all the the social justice warrior fucks out there who are like, "We need to diversify everything." No, not everything. This show like this girl Nicole who Nicole who finished third, she didn't do much all season. They want to claim that that was her game to lay, lay on the radar, but she's one of these types that's like you know, she's not a, a outgoing person. You know, she's not ugly by any means, but you know, she's not like you know the the soccer star chick who has this beautiful body. So she's already going to be set up as like the underdog. They, they 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 put her in the house. You're the underdog, and let's see if she can get all the way. But the problem is. They set this whole thing up of like, okay, they had like they were having a meeting. You, they're having an alliance meeting, and somebody wants to, tries to come in, and they're like, hey, we're having a meeting, and then they turned that into bullying. They made that into bullying. No, no, no. You know what? If it was a hot person trying to come into the room that the alliance wasn't with, they would have just said done the exact same thing. But because you set up the victimhood, because you set up where like, here's our victims, our people, you know, the the the, the underdogs of society, the fat, the old, the, the, the nerds, let's put them in with all these pretty people. Then you instantly create this thing where the people at home are like, I want that person to win. Take that element out. Just make Big Brother what it is. Awful pretty people trying to win $500,000, period. Or... If you're going to diversify it, completely diversify it and dumb down the competitions. Let's make let's make the competitions like like the old guy Cliff. He won this one competition where he had to hold a board, you know, and like 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 balance a ball. That was like perfect competition because it didn't have to do with him running a marathon or holding on to anything because every single one of those competition, the fat girl and the old guy, they fell first every time. The final competition was you had to like there was like you had to like go across some swings w- that are held up by rope that chick Jessica wasn't going to be able to do that that would have been a fucking disaster then she had to jump over some stuff like why set people like that up for failure you know and then then you're going to make it look like oh we made this competition so the straight white athletic male he's going to be the one that's going to win this that's how big brother is so when you add people like that in your attempt to diversify shit, all you're doing is setting them up for failure and making everybody hate the A-type personalities, which we're supposed to hate them anyway because it's Big Brother. They're doing all this shit for money. So now there's this whole thing, and I thought the finale was ruined. Right before they're about to announce who wins, they go, oh, by the way, uh, dude, uh, there's allegations that you were being racist 99 days ago. The dude was blown away. It was so inappropriate, so inappropriate. And then, you know, he won, and he just had this stoic look on his face like, wow, y'all just called me a racist in front of America and my family. And by the way, the people that called him that were the motherfuckers that got kicked off early because y'all saw suck at big brother that's why you got kicked off you're not good at it and by the way let me say this not being good at big brother is not an insult it's a compliment because this like this girl kimmy who's it's this beautiful black girl she sucks at big brother okay i'm sorry you suck at big brother and I'm glad you suck at Big Brother because you didn't want to lie and scheme and act a certain way. That's what it takes to make it all the way in that stupid show. So to have this dumbass show, this stupid, horrible social experiment, and then you want to like, then you want to, so you want to have a stupid, stupid social experiment where people, where it accentuates the worst attributes of people's personality, and then you want to blame them for it, and then you want to criticize them for what it does. It was so fucking stupid, but that's the culture we live in right now. All right, that's my big brother rant. 
Let's go to the singing mic on the 50th episode. And that was my big brother, Ray. Whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> what else has been going on recently? Um, the Chappelle special came out, man, and people were fired up, man. You know, and I, I, I used to be the kind of person that was like, you know, this is like people are too sensitive. You know, people are too sensitive. And I realized, you know what? It's okay that people are sensitive. You know what? It's I'm fine that you're sensitive. I just don't appreciate how we're going about dealing with the sensitivity. You know, it shouldn't be like, you know, these people were out there don't watch the special. Because, you know, it's like, hey, you don't watch it, bitch. You know what? I don't need you to watch it, critic. Just go, you start to watch it and you don't like it, don't even write about it. Because no one cares. You know what I mean? The need for critics is gone. The need, you know, but they're just there as a sounding board for the super sensitive types, you know? But like you could just decide for yourself now. You can look and see that over a hundred thousand people loved it, and these seven to eight critics, you know, like a certain percentage of them didn't. And it's like so the the people on my side were like making a big deal out of that. But my thing is like, so what? That's those people's job. Like, whatever. No one really cares. They have to justify their position. So if they want to be like, oh, this was the worst thing ever, fine. Because the rest of us saw it and we're like, oh, I loved it. Look, it, listen, jokes are jokes, all right? You have to understand the setting that you're in. You know, he put out a comedy special. He's a social commentary type of comic, but he's also very like, you know, he could be, he's out there. You know what I mean? He his 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 thinking is it's not regular people thinking. There is you know there's satire. There's like and he was you know he was really digging in on some of these topics to to make you think and make you laugh. If you didn't like it, if you took things too personal, I appreciate that you felt that way. And but you should also be like you know what it still was also for entertainment. Uh, I'm sure he didn't necessarily mean to take offense. Like understand the nuance of what the guy was talking about but there was so much backlash and it's like in his position it's like who gives a fuck i just made 20 million dollars to do this so he's in a position where it doesn't matter and so then a week later bill burr's special comes out paper tiger funny it was very funny but the first four or five minutes he definitely was in that same tone of like getting on the social the you know the the social justice warriors getting on the sensitive types and so i saw this one article that got, well the guy was like you know if you don't watch you know you know if you if you if you cut out the first 5 minutes and you'll enjoy it cuz the rest of it is different and i looked at it and i was like you know i actually understood what the guy meant because the fir- yeah the first 5 minutes he was in that vein of like you know fuck social justice warriors and you Twitter, you Twitter mongrels and all that stuff. And then it was a different special after that. It was more personal and vulnerable. But I think the first part was just as important. But Bill Burr didn't get the same kind of backlash that Chappelle got. And I think that it's because Chappelle's special was like, it was like if a natural disaster hits one of these little countries, you know? And there's like, you know, it just just devastation. And then what we do is we get all riled up, you know, and we like do a, a telethon and we're like everybody's donating money and the whole country cares. And then a week later, there's a similar natural disaster. But now we're like, ooh, I already did all that. So I'm kind of I don't have it in, in me to do it again. That's what Bill Burr special was. It was like, oh, another heavy hitter comic hits you with some funny social commentary. And now you don't have any more energy to bitch and complain like little pussies because you, you, you blew your load when Chappelle's came out. Now we need another one to come out and another one. And so we could just level the playing field. So you just be like, oh, I don't have enough energy to hate every single special that comes out. So hopefully another big one will come out. Um, you know, of one of these like, you know, heavy hitter guys and uh, this just has, you know, it's just comedy, man. It's just comedy. And speaking of like, I'm on my podcast now. And so it's like, I got to be careful. Now we have to be careful or thoughtful or whatever the word is about what we say even on here, because these fucks are going to go back and, and take some shit out of context and it might hold it against you. Not to say that the Shane McGillis, the SNL guy who, he got on SNL and then he got kicked off because they found some racist and stuff on his podcast. I heard the clip, you know, I'm not a fan of it. 
You know what I mean? I'm not a fan of that type of comedy anyway, like smug white guy comedy. That's not my thing. I have my own smug <laughs> brand of comedy, you know? But, like, it, when I heard it, I was like, eh. It's like, I get it. I'm a comic. I get what he was trying to do. But it's like, you put it out publicly, and there are people who are going to be like, I don't like this. But to say that that's who the guy is and just to kick the, kick the guy off the show was, uh, I don't know how I feel about it. I'm actually kind of 50-50 on it. Because you have to weigh... Is it enough backlash where people are going to be, I don't want to watch that show, or there's so much negative talk about it that you're just kind of like, eh, let's just cut ties with this guy and move forward. I don't know. Because then all this other stuff started coming out about him, and I don't know if it's true or not, but it was just enough things where I think SNL was like, yeah, it's just, let's move on from this guy. Kind of like the Patriots <coughs> did with Antonio Brown. It's kind of just like, ah, this isn't, the the risk reward is not good enough, and I think that's what happened with that guy. But I don't know. I think it's, I don't again, I don't know how to feel about it because like, I'm not a fan of the guy. But I did see this one really stupid tweet, like really stupid Yes, you know, this girl and she's like, you know, I've watched SNL my whole life and I will no longer be watching because it's racist now. And I think to myself, you better look at the cast. If you've been watching it your whole life, you've probably already seen some racism. You know, you probably are. You know, it's like that show has been white for a long time. Not to say that that makes it racist, but it's like, what are you looking for right now? Like, what are you like? You're looking at the show and being like, oh, now that you, some guy not on the show yet talked about some shit off screen in his own private, you know, his own private thing. And now that makes the whole show racist when you've been watching a show that has been predominantly white for 40 years. OK, there's always just one black guy, you know, a few women. And just recently they've tried to change that. And you didn't you didn't see a problem with all that before your whole life, but now this is like this is the culture we're in right now. This kind of shock and awe, you know, shock and awe. We're gonna get them, cancel them, and then move the fuck on, cancel them. So I just I'm not with it. At the same time, I do understand it though. Like I understand, I'm okay with people. Be, I want to say again, I'm okay with people being sensitive. I'm okay with people voicing their sensitivity. I'm just not okay with how we're going about dealing with it afterwards. You know, it should be just be like, well, like again, with Chappelle's special, people have a thought. This is their thought about it. And then after that, it's just like, okay, you spoke your piece. Now let's move on. Let it go. You know what I mean? <sighs> whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> All right. I want to go to. Some of the question and answer section of the podcast. Um, people have asked a lot of really interesting questions. So let's go to some of them. All right. This is from on Instagram. I'm not going to read people's uh, freaking handles because you guys are all stupid with your dumb handles. Everybody's handle should be their name. You know what I mean? And maybe their zip code or like, you know, if like if you yeah, like if there's another Eric Griffin, it should be like Eric Griffin, L.A., Eric Griffin, Boston or Eric Griffin, 9000, what, you know, whatever it is. But these dumbass names are stupid. Anyway, it seems like you prefer Xbox over PS4. Am I wrong? No, I do prefer Xbox because I like the controller. The Xbox controller is just fucking better. OK, it's big. I got big hands. Um, do you still use Liverpool football when you play cut with FIFA? Ha, that's an old school question from somebody I used to play FIFA with. No, I, you know what? I, I stopped following the teams. So I just kind of look at the stats and whatever stats I like, I pick that team. I actually been like, liking, uh, the, what's the, what's the German team, the yellow, the, with the yellow uniforms. I forgot the German team with the yellow. I usually, I usually play with them. You know, you guys figure it out in the comments. Um, what's your personal occupational ambitions? You'd be a great Bond villain. Ha! You know what? I would love to be like a villain in something, you know? Just be the bad guy. Play against my, like, you know, happy guy personality type. You know, like Robin Williams did. Not that I'm comparing myself to Robin Williams. I'm just saying it was great that he was such a happy guy and everything. And then, then he started to really be great at being a villain or just a serious. And from doing I'm Dying Up Here, I'm really ready to do more serious roles. So, But my personal occupational goals is just to be able to continue to work. Just continue to work and also get to the point where I'm working because I want to, not because I have to. 
What is the purpose of a mustache? You know, I really don't know. I don't There must be some sort of scientific reason why the body has a mustache. I just don't know what it is. I think it's like it, maybe it's supposed to catch snot. Maybe it's a snot catcher or, you know, to keep like particles out of your mouth or or from going in. Like when you sniff up, maybe it's like dirt is supposed to catch in your mustache before it goes into your nose or something. I don't know what the purpose of a mustache, but I know some of the things I do with it. <laughs> Dirty. Uh, if you produce a movie, what would it be? Uh, I don't know. I, I just, you know what? I want to get back to making fun rom, like fun rated R comedies. You know what I mean? Where there's titties and and people are laughing at, at, at stuff, and we can still have strong female characters and have titties. You know what I mean? It's okay. Let's just do everything tastefully, funny and tasteful rated R fun comedies. We're gonna get back to that. You know what I mean? Um, when are you going to see an official Scorpion Lashes podcast? I don't know yet. I actually just had Kalila on my podcast and we talked about it. So we'll see what happens. We'll see what the future brings, man. Um, okay. Let's go to the next page. Thoughts on the Joker and a future talk of Jonah Hill as a penguin. Yeah. Jonah Hill's a great actor. You know what I mean? I, I don't have any problem with him being that. If Danny DeVito can do it, Jonah Hill can do it. And the Joker just looks dark and, you know, interesting. And like, this is what I'm saying. Rated R. I, I, I can't wait for it. Like, what an interesting character that has been in our minds for so long. Joker and Batman. So I just can't wait to see uh, what that looks like. It should be a good one. How did you get into comedy and how do you come up with the material? Well, I got into comedy by starting to go to open mics by myself and just staying in the circuit and just building a reputation and just keep writing and writing and writing and writing and writing. Um, and I come up with material because I'm very – whatever's going on in my life or whatever I observe, I, I like to think about what my take is on that and then put it on put it on stage. You know, that's how I do it. Uh, let me see here. Oh, how funny are you compared to how funny you think you are? <laughs> that is a great fucking question. How funny are you compared to how funny you think you are? Damn. Wow, you're making me really go introspective on this shit. Like, I don't know. You know, I, I can only look at the crowds. Like, when, when I'm, I'll say this about myself. When I'm on, when I'm in the pocket and my rhythm, I'm on stage and, like, I can see people really enjoying me, like, crying and belly laughing. So, sometimes I think I'm really, really funny. But I sometimes, though, I know I'm not as smart as I think I am. I think I'm as funny as I think I am, but I don't think I'm as smart as I think I am. But actually, excellent question. Um, yeah, somebody asked me that twice. I like that. Um, let me see. Uh, what was the first joke you ever wrote? Oh, the first joke I ever wrote was about having a big nose. So like, it would, I don't know. I can't do it in this chair. Actually, I think I could do it in this chair. So I would be like, <laughs> this is the first joke I ever wrote. Okay, first joke I ever wrote. So you people that are listening, I'll describe it, but you people that are watching, you'll get it more uh, closely, closely. But I'd be like, I have a big nose. And when you have a big nose, you're only taking pictures one way, just like this. People say, turn to the side. <laughs> so if you people that are listening, what I would do is I would keep my head straight and turn my body to the right or left, you know, as if to say, you know, I'm always in pro, I'm never in a profile shot. <laughs> anyway. I don't know. It probably, it probably listens. It doesn't sound as funny as uh, it probably looks. But you should be really funny. That was the first joke I wrote. I love that joke. Let's see. Uh, bum, 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 bum. What are your top five video games? My top five video games are Destiny is number one. Destiny, because I've been playing it for five, six years. Any game that you could play that long. And then FIFA is number two. And I just count them all the, the versions as the same. Just playing that sports game is pretty fun. I really enjoy that. Those two. Um, what's another good game? Um, Infamous on PS4. That was a really great game to play. I really enjoyed that game. Uh, and Batman. Batman Arkham Knight. Oh, man, that game is so fun. The fighting. You really feel what you're doing with the fighting. I love that game. So that's uh, best driving music. I think the best driving music is whatever mood you're in. You know what I mean? Like sometimes sometimes, like, sometimes I'm in easy listening mood or sometimes I'm in like a jazz mood. 
So jazz is a really good driving music. Country music's great when you're driving because he's just hearing those stories and they're in there like on a country road. You know what I mean? I just I love uh, country music. That's a great one too. All right, here we go. Experiences, differences in other countries. Yeah, I think that the differences in other countries are it's, it's a lot. It's a lot of cultural things. You know, like when you go to Europe, you know, it just feels older. It feels like it has a way older history than the United States. And, and you could see it in the buildings and the culture. And like, you know, it's like when you go someplace in New York and it's like, here's a deli. Oh, this deli's been here since 1925. You know, you go to Europe and some shit has been there since 1725 or something. Here's an old church. Uh, so I, I just feel like the culture in other countries is like sometimes it's just more old and rich. Um, and, you know, and the, obviously the food is always different in different places. You know, look at a fat guy talking about food. Um, let's see. Your your review of 90 Day Fiance. Listen, there's so many different shows of 90 Day Fiance. 90, 90 Day Fiance is it, that show infuriates me. You know, it's just crazy people thinking like, you know what? There's two kinds of couples on 90 Day Fiance. You got you got the the cute, you got the hot couple. These are two people, but there's still something going on because one of them is just trying to get their green card and in this quirky relationship, but you kind of feel like it can work. Or there's one where it's like some old guy, some fat guy, or some fat girl, or some old fat girl. Uh, you know, that's just that's the show. Watch it. Uh, the, and they're and they're in love with some young, in shape guy or girl, and you know who's trying to get their green card, and it's just exploitative. I just I, sometimes I hate that fucking show, but I can't stop watching it. If today's comedians can make it, can't wait. The, I guess the question is, can today's comedians make it without a podcast slash social media? Can they make it? Yeah, I think so. I think you still need something. You know, like, are you saying, like, if it was just TV or uh, I, 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 I don't know. I think you're going to need something. So actually, I don't know if a, a comedian today can start and not have social media and make it happen because these clubs are out here like, what's your social media numbers? Like, you know, you know, th that's all they fucking care about right now. Social media. All right. First time you ever experienced wonder open world video games and it blows you away. Oh. I guess that was, you know, what? Infamous was the first open world video game on PS4 that I was like, oh, wow, this is incredible. You can just go anywhere you want to go, which is pretty dope. I also like Gears of War on on Xbox, by the way. Uh, let's see. Favorite childhood story. Damn. I don't know if I have a favorite childhood story, but what's coming to mind right now is there used to be this restaurant called Carnation. It was, you know, by the Carnation Company. It was like a little, de a little deli, like, like like a little cafe, like, but like Denny's style food, like House of Pancake. But they always had the best ice cream sundaes. And I remember I'm going there with my mom, and like I was a young kid, and I was like, Mom, I want to get a sundae. And she was like, No, you're not gonna get like a shake. It was a shake, and she was like, No, you're not gonna get it. We're gonna share it, you know. And then she drank most of it. I'll never forget that. That was the first time I was like, Damn, my mom's selfish with food. It's probably why I'm selfish with food. But she drank the whole fucking shake, y'all. Left me like this much. And I was like, yo, what's going on? And then she was like, started laughing. She was like, oh my God, it was like so good that she forgot she was supposed to share it with her son. Damn it. Uh, let's see, what do we got here? Uh, when did you first, when did your first television experience, experience, did you like it? And did you feel it brought you up, brought up in your Brought you up in your career? That's a weird question. I'm just I'm just a terrible reader. Uh, Workaholics was my really my first first major thing. So and as you know, Workaholics is like the reason why I'm here today. So Workaholics is dope. It's a great experience, and I'll always treasure the you know the Montez love. Um, somebody already asked. I would love to hear your talk about this season's Big Brother and your opinions on it. You know, I already that's the first thing I started with y'all. So you got to go look go back and look at that shit. Here's a question. It just says Theo Vaughn. <laughs> I guess I'm just supposed to talk about Theo. I love Theo. He just like the, you know when you watch him, it's just like it's like you, you, it's almost like I wish I could see the cartoon like above his head of like the things that he's saying. You know what I mean? He's just like an interesting cat, and I'm glad that things are working out for him right now. He's a real good dude, and he deserves it. Um, thoughts on Call of Duty? I still love Call of Duty. I just I haven't won yet. You know what I mean? God, the, my candle guy just asked me if I want more. Do you want more candles for your studio? Yeah, when these run out, you're going to send me some more candles, motherfucker. I want some more of those damn candles. P 
Pelosi's announcing inqu- inquiring into impeachment. Damn. I'm so 50-50 on this impeachment thing because I feel like he should be voted out or you're going to make him a martyr. But at the same time, I feel like even if he, if he goes out of office, he's still going to be a thorn in our side. He's going to like probably be on Fox News or something like that. Or they'll have the, the Trump report. You know, he'll, be, he'll, he'll find a way to get on TV and still be even more famous. And then he has carte blanche to do whatever business that he wants. But this might be the smoking gun for him. But I don't know. They keep saying this. But this guy keeps surviving. I think Nancy Pelosi did not want to do this. She was adamant about it. I think, I think she saw... Like, even before the Mueller report, she was talking about, like, let's not worry about impeachment. Let's just vote him out. I think she saw Mueller at a at a Starbucks, and he was like, I got nothing. There's nothing on this thing. There's nothing. And then, you know you know what I mean? So, But I don't know. I just wish my problem with Mueller, I wish he would just fucking say something. Just say, I think something happened. You know, he's being so wishy-washy, so iffy. Like, just say straight out what you think, man. Just tell us. You think the dude's a crook. Just say that or say, I don't think he did anything illegal, but they can't. What's all this wishy-washy middle ground stuff, man? Just say something, dude. How about people in the industry that shut you down without names? Of course, um, who shut? Yeah, I've had managers and agents who have like, you know, done some fucked up things, but you know, like you say, no names. I'm not going to even go into that right now. Talk about why you don't come to Columbus, Ohio. I have come to Columbus, Ohio, but that particular club is, you know, it's a tough sell. And like that club, the person that runs that club, you know, he wants you to like, you have to like, he he doesn't, he doesn't care about growth. He's not, he's not trying to grow your audience. He wants you to already have an audience. So it's that kind of thing. So maybe if, you know, you know, all you people out in Columbus, Ohio, if you really want me to come to Columbus, let's start banging the drum. You know, let's start calling the club being like, yo, I need, I want Eric Griffin. That goes for anybody out there, any state, any city. You want me to come? I want to come. But these clubs got to know that people want me to come. So get your ass out there and bang the drum. All right. What makes a comedy club great? The staff, the layout, or the crowd? Great question. This is a great question. What makes a comedy club great? For me, it's never about the crowd. Um, I want for, well. It has to have a good sound. As long as it has a good sound system and good lighting, can they see me? Can they hear me? That should be the basics, okay? But for me, I never necessarily worry about the crowd. I'm worried about the hotel. Like, where am I staying? Is there a movie theater nearby? Is there stuff to do? Am I going to be sequestered the other 22 hours of the day? So that's what to me makes a good comedy club. But. You know, but for you fans, it's like, as long as it's a good setup, can everybody see the comedian and can everybody hear the comedian? Those are the most important things. Just shit on Bobby and Santino for an hour. <laughs> That'll be a whole other podcast. Like a fucking dumbass little Bobby and that red fuck. You know what I mean? Trying to cut me out of the, you know, we're going to do a podcast. You know, no, they're not. Uh, what I'm not, you know what I want to officially say, even on my podcast, <laughs> if they want to do a podcast, you totally have my blessing. I love them both; they are my friends. But I am going to go on there, and I'm going to fucking sabotage while I'm on there. What's the most embarrassing moment of your life? Oh man, I, I have so many of those. <laughs> but one embarrassing one was like this is such a common one for people. But you know, I was like in the fifth grade, and like. You know, I had sweats on and then, you know, I had, you know, you have to read in front of the, you know, Eric, come up and read the, and I had a heart on, you know what I mean? I, my dick was like, you know, and everybody was noticed and was laughing. And I was like, I, I just kept reading though. I was like, I'm not going <laughs> to, I'm not going to acknowledge this. Just keep going. You know what I mean? Uh, somebody said, talk about Bobby Lee. I already did. I love Bobby. You know, if I want to talk about Bob, Bobby's a little weird fuck, but he's uh, one of my best friends in the whole wide world. Uh, you know, uh, I'm gonna, I'll, I'll love that dude for life unless he fucks up. You know what I mean? When are you doing another show in Florida? I don't know. I'm working on it again. You want me to come to Florida? Call the club. You want me to come to tweet at the club, Instagram, the club. But if you literally call the club, that's even better. Like if you phone call, you know, I know, I know you guys don't like you. Millennials don't like talking on the phone and you don't even understand how that works. Call them and be like, yo, can you bring Eric Griffin to the comedy club? I think that that that, that does a lot more, man. You'd be surprised. Would you rather do a podcast with Bobby Lee or Andrew Santino? Damn, I think they're those, those would be both great. If I'm going to have, I haven't had Andrew on Riffin with Griffin yet, but I might have him on, but I don't know. 
I think that that would be both. If I had to pick, if I had to pick, I'd probably pick Bobby just because him and I have a thing that is like, it's just crazy when we get together. Talk about turning 50. Fuck you. That's what I'll say there to that. Okay. It's a couple, it's a few years away, bro. All right. Um, but I don't know. I didn't, I, I, don't know if I've accomplished all that I've wanted to accomplish professionally, personally, uh, till I got to, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't know what I was going to be doing at this time in my life. I love what I'm doing right now, but at the same time, I'm like, damn, this is like, I still feel like there's unknown out there. And so we'll see what happens when I, you know, cruise into 50. Uh, let's see. Uh, no greatest comedy duo in your opinion, greatest comedy duo. I don't know. There's so many of them. Maybe you know Jerry Lewis and D- and uh, Dean Martin or Bob Hope and uh, Dean Martin. You know, Key and Peele. You know, Key and Peele. They're a fucking funny ass duo. Mustache maintenance tips. Damn, this is a good one too. Well, you know what? I, I got you. Got Manscaped. You know, you should get Manscaped. They got some uh, good products there, but that's more for your balls. But they still got good products. <laughs> you don't have to use that trimmer for your balls, but you know, you know, you want to make sure your mustache doesn't go on your lip. That's a hard thing to do. So my mustache grows so fast. So you want to trim the lip, you know, and you want to make sure it's not too fluffy. You want to get a comb, keep it combed out. And if you have some like sort of like conditioner for your mustache, that's also good too, to keep it nice and soft, you know, when you're kissing the ladies or, or whatever, whoever you're kissing, whatever your thing is, you know what I mean? And when you're doing other things with your mouth, you want your you don't want your mustache to be too coarse. You want it to be soft and luxurious. Um, a lot of questions about shit talking Bobby, which is so weird. Um, Star Wars rankings. Damn, that's a good one. Star Wars rankings. Oh shit. Wor- if I had to say the worst Star Wars movie is the return, the one, uh, the Sith one where Anakin Skywalker goes crazy and starts right before he turns into Darth Vader, which I think that was like Rise of the Sith. That one was terrible. All those are actually terrible. Those are like the worst three right there, along with, um, damn, they're all. Some of them are so bad. Uh, I think I, fuck those ones. The, the, the bad. I can't even remember all the bad ones. But I would say that the original three are my favorite. I'm a Return of the Jedi guy. Sorry for you, pretentious Empire Strikes Back people. But for me, it's Jedi Empire, and then the original Star Wars, and then Rogue One. I thought Rogue One was pretty good. That was that was a really good Star Wars movie. Please get Brian Callen on soon. Oh, okay, I, I, I could do that. You know, all right, that's pretty good. I mean, there's more Instagram questions, but I'm not going to go into them. You know, let me. There, there's actually some good Twitter questions too. So let me go to Twitter right now and uh, grab those uh, and grab those Twitter questions. Um, and once again, guys, I, I really want to thank you guys for. Uh, supporting Riffin with Griffin and, you know, just watching, you know, and all the stuff that you've been doing. Okay. Let's see if, was there any good Twitter questions? Um, you've had some great guests. Uh, wouldn't be mad at a best of, Oh yeah. Maybe a best of episode. You know, you know what? You're right. Actually, I didn't even get any Twitter, Twitter questions. Best comic gamer you've played with. That's Bobby. Bobby Lee's my best comic gamer. Um, I know I should come out with like, uh, Best of Riffin with Griffin, maybe like a, even maybe even right now we cut to a montage of uh, all my favorite episodes. So you know, recapping fifty episodes of Riffin with Griffin. Uh, it's been a fantastic run. I've really had a, a fun time doing this, and you know, episode fifty two will be a year, so that's going to be another one, another special one. But I just wanted to say thank you to the the fans and people listening. You know, all the shit that I talk on this damn thing, and all the people that come on the podcast. You know, I have these really interesting conversations with people, and I got a really interesting one coming up. I got this uh, nerd coming on, Dylan Dixon, Dixteen, Dylan Dixteen. I <laughs> know weird name, but he want he's going to be an astronaut. I met him on the Logan Paul podcast. He was just you know he was just there, and he's such a fascinating kid. He talks about Mars, and he talks about going to Mars and space, and. It's just I just wanted to have somebody that's outside of the entertainment business to come on and just see how that goes too. So make sure you guys keep watching Griffin with Griffin. I really appreciate it. Uh, I, I love I love all the fans. I love all the fans. I love all the support. You know what? Let's go. Let's 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 get some uh, let, let's get some Griffin with Griffin themes. Some some theme music going on right here. Where where we got? Where the music at? Where this Griffin with Griffin theme songs at, y'all? 
all these theme songs that people sent to me. I love them, you know, especially Detective Designs. You know, these are my guys. So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for listening to Riffin' with Griffin. Like I said, I love y'all on the singing mic. But what my question to you is, uh-huh. why didn't you brush before? <laughs> Like knowing, I mean, because like I'm, knowing I'm gonna, you have a mouth infection. Because in American society, right? What are you doing here, dude? Eric, Eric, yeah. Eric, 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 Eric. I have, A, I brush my teeth. Okay. Yeah. I use it. Crest whitening, whatever the best every stuff is out there. I, you swear to God you do. You, you floss and you brush your teeth I don't every day. Flo- Hold up. You didn't ask me if I flossed. You didn't That's ask true. me if I flossed. Yeah. You asked me if in I brushed my teeth. In his defense, yeah. I brush my teeth. Yeah, you brushed it twice a day. Yeah, uh-huh. once in the morning. Yeah, in the shower and then at oh, night. Remember? Who okay. Said this. All right. So let me get this straight. You came prepared with a mustache. <laughs> Truth be told, I always have a mustache. Yeah. I always keep a mustache. So you had a mustache ready to go. Yeah, I use a mustache in my act, so you never know when you. Have oh, to- that's right! I for- <laughs> I remember that now. Actually, you know what? I'm not as mad about it now. <laughs> it wasn't specifically for this podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like I now, just- actually, I'm a little disappointed. <laughs> You didn't put your heart and soul into, the, okay, into okay. your visit. I'd like to do it again, and I have the glasses with the nose. You know, that looks like you. that would piss me off. <laughs> My crew that I work with, they're all just pig monsters. They eat anything. <laughs> I mean, Jeremiah and Red Band and yeah. Joel are human garbage disposals. <laughs> without a I don't doubt. Know what, I don't know how Jeremiah does it. Like, where does he put it? It's just all in his nose. You know, <laughs> <laughs> it just goes. <laughs> the last date that I went on, I fell asleep. Damn. What, what? What? Okay. Well, why was it? Because it was too late at night. No, it wasn't. You were even coming off something busy. Yeah, was, was the was guy that boring? <laughs> okay. First of all, this is not uh, watching at home. This oh ain't God. real brick. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know where you get this at. Uh, Some party God. shop in fucking Tijuana. Yeah. Yeah. What is this? It's exactly what you think it is. It's a, a thing. It's a, it's a it's a piece of paper with a yeah. brick wall on it. Yeah, it looks nice though. Why you to it be does, a dick? That's what I'm saying. When I look at it on camera, yeah, I go, this motherfucker work lives in like a loft. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, like I downtown, yeah. like yeah, yeah, yeah. brick, I was exposed brick. And I come in here and it's like fucking ghetto, dude. Look at this thing. Yeah. What I like is how people are still finding it. People are finding it like it's like it's new or something. I'm starting to, like, I've been noticing, like, in Twitter mentions, people going back and watching it again. Yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, like, getting to be that time where it's, like, well, even me, I was, like, over at Adam's talking to him, and we were trying to, we were just going through, like, episodes, just being, like, what is that one about? <laughs> like, some were, like, stumpers. Like, what was that one? All in my butt. Why do I always go to the butt line? Anyway, see y'all.